Welcome back to the Power Ranking Show. My name's Cam Williams, and this week we have a lot of changes to the Power Rankings. Of course, the French Open just finished last week, and with some big players clashing from the top 20 of the Power Ranks, some massive changes have happened. We've got some new players in the Power Rankings, and of course, a change at the top as well. Uh, let's start with number 20, though, in the Power Ranks. So starting at number 20 for the Power Ranks this week, we have a return by Hubi Hercatch. He's gotten back into the Power Rankings. He was missing for a few weeks due to some poor form, but with a good result at the French Open, making it to the fourth round, losing to Casper Ruud. Good result there, gets back into the Power Ranks, number 20 for Hercatch. Coming in number 19 is Jill Teichman, who's gone down two spots lower than last time we did the Power Ranks. And she didn't have a bad French Open. She actually had a pretty good one, making it to the fourth round, beating Azarenka along the way. But unfortunately, she lost to Sloane Stevens, and Sloane Stevens is not featured in the Power Ranks. So that was a bad loss for her. She needs to play well over Wimbledon if she's going to maintain that ranking. Coming in number 18, a return again after a good French Open is Cam Norrie. He's jumped in at number 18 spot for the Power Ranks this week. Made it to the third round, so not the greatest French Open result, but lost to Hashinov. And Hashinov has had a pretty good couple of weeks, so... Wasn't the worst loss for him in the third round. So he returns back to the power rankings after a few players that were in the power rankings did really poor and dropped out completely. Coming in number 17 is Maria Zachary. Now she's gone down eight spots lower than last time. And that's because she had a bad, bad French Open losing in the second round to Mukova. Now Mukova is a good player. We all know that. But fortunately for her, Mukova is not in the top of the power ranks. And that really hurt Zachary in the power ranks this week. So all the form that she had had leading up to the French Open basically went out the window with that bad loss. She got to play well on the grass to maintain her top 20 ranking. Coming in number 16 is Belinda Bencic. Four spots lower than last time and similar to Zachary. Just didn't have the greatest results of the French Open. She did beat Andrescu in the second round, but she lost in the third round to Fernandez, who is not featured in the power ranks. So had she had maybe beaten Fernandez, kind of like Zachary, she might have stayed a little bit higher, but she goes down number 16 for this week. Coming in number 15 is another return to the power ranks after a very, very good French Open is Jessica Bagula. She is back in the power rankings after being gone for the last couple of months. She, of course, makes the quarterfinals of the French Open, losing to Iga Sviantec. Very, very good French Open result for her, beating some good players along the way in Zedinshek and Kalanina, who have had pretty good weeks over the last few weeks before the French Open, so Pagula, she comes back in the power ranks at number 15. Number 14, we have a new player in the power ranks, Coco Goff, of course, made the final of the French Open, losing to Iga Sviantec, so she is brand new to the power ranks, and she is up at number 14, and she did beat some good players along the way, including Kanepi, Mertens, and eventually losing to Sviantec, who has been dominating the power rankings ever since they started. So Goff is at number 14 because she's had a very, very good week and only lost to the best player in the power ranks. Coming in number 13, down four spots lower than last time is Andre Rublev. Didn't have the worst French Open, actually did pretty well, making it to the quarterfinals. But unfortunately for Rublev, he lost to Marin Cilic and Cilic is not featured in the power rankings at all, which makes for a bad result. He did beat Sinner along the way though Rublev, so he didn't drop down that far, but still. Four spots lower than last time at number 13. Coming in number 12 is Anissa Mova, who's down one spot lower than last time. And she had a pretty good French Open as well, very much like Rublev, beating players like Osaka and Mukova along the way, but she ended up losing to Fernandez. And it's kind of like Bencic. Fernandez had not featured in the power rankings before, so it is considered a bad loss, even though in reality, Fernandez is a good player. We know what she can do. But the power rankings... It's who you beat and who you lose to, and that's why she's down one spot lower than last time. Coming in at number 11 is a brand new player in the power ranks, Kazakina, and getting to the semifinals of the French Open really helped her. Of course, lost to Iga Sviantec in the end, which, again, is not a bad result because she has dominated the power rankings. So beating Kudamatova along the way, as well as Georgie, really helped her get into the top 20 of the power ranks for the first time. Kazakina, brand new at number 11. Coming in number 10 is Paola Badosa, who's gone up five spots higher than last time. And it's interesting because she actually lost in the third round and she did lose by retirement. So retirements are a little bit weird. It's kind of a half loss. It's not considered a full loss. So players that do retire when they're in the power rankings don't get penalized because it's sort of a half loss. It's not a complete loss as if you had lost that match in straight sets, for example. And not the terrible loss losing the Kudamatova in the end. For Badosa, and she got rewarded because some players above her did really, really poor. Coming in number nine is Yannick Sinner. He's gone down one spot lower than last time. And of course, just like Badosa, he retired in his fourth round match against Rublev. So not a bad result there. Only a half loss and also to Rublev, who's also featured in the power ranks. So he only went down one spot lower than last time. Coming in at number eight is 
Casper Ruud, he's gone up 11 spots higher than last week, and that's, of course, because of his French Open final. Beating players like Hercatch along the way, and also losing to Rafa in the final, who's been very high up in the power ranks for the entire year. Casper Ruud got rewarded big time for making his first Grand Slam final, so he's up 11 spots higher than last time at number 8. Coming in at number 7 is Novak Djokovic, who's gone down one spot lower than last week. Now, he lost to Rafa, which, again, is not a, that's not a terrible loss. Rafa's been up the top of the power ranks for the entire time, but he didn't really beat anyone in the power ranks. He beat Schwartzman along the way, which is a good win, but Schwartzman hasn't been featured in the power rankings before, so... Unfortunately for Djokovic, because of his draw and because he didn't beat Rafa, he didn't get rewarded in the power ranks, despite making it to the quarterfinals, but he maintains his top spin spot either way. Coming in number six is Ons Jabor. Now, she's gone down three spots lower than last time because she lost in the first round, which was a huge upset. So she got penalized. She had a very good results coming in to the French Open with winning Madrid and making the final of Rome. But because she lost to Lynette in the first round, she got penalized. She goes down three spots lower than last time. Coming in at number five is Stefanos Tsitsipas. He's down one spot lower than last time. Now, he did make it to the fourth round, which is a pretty good result for him. Lost in the end to Runa, which is really why he got penalized and dropped that one spot. So he does stay into the top five, but he has to have a pretty good grass court season if he's going to maintain his record in the top 10. Coming in at number four is Alexander Zverev. He is at three spots higher than last time, and that's because he made the semifinals, and it's also because he beat Carlos Alcaraz. Now, we all know Alcaraz has been up the top of the power ranks ever since they started a few months ago, so massive win there, and he lost to Rafa with a retirement, which, again, isn't a bad loss. So he is at number four in the power rankings, three spots higher than last time. Speaking of Alcaraz, coming in at number three is Carlos Alcaraz. He's gone down one spot lower than last time, and that's because he lost to Zverev. In the end, he did have some good wins, though, against, you know, Korda and Hashinov, but they weren't the top of the tree wins. And losing to Zverev, that hurt his ranking. He drops down one spot into that number three spot. Coming in number two is Rafa Nadal. He goes up three spots higher than last time. And, of course, he had that bad loss against Shapovalov leading into the French Open, which dropped him down the power ranks. But beating guys like Ojeda Eliassime, Djokovic, Zverev, and Ruud gets him back into that number two spot. Three spots higher than last time. And coming in in the number one spot for the millionth time in a row, she stays at number one. It's Iga Swiatek, And no surprise there. I mean, she's beating everybody in the WTA. She can't lose at the moment. She wins another title during this power ranking season and also during her streak. So until she loses the match, I don't think she's going to be dethroned. Rafa's not too far behind her, but I mean, she just keeps winning. It's very hard to topple someone who just keeps winning. So Iga Swiatek for another week in a row stays at the top of the power rankings. So there you have it. They are the power rankings for the week. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon? Is there someone missing that should be in the power rankings? Is there someone in the power rankings that you're a little surprised is that high up? There's a lot of players that obviously won't be playing over the Wimbledon season, which is going to be interesting to see how the power rankings throw up uh, different names during that season. A lot of the Russian and Belarusian players will actually be protected during that uh, those seasons because they won't be playing matches. But uh, we'll keep an eye on how the power ranks play over the next couple of weeks. But let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon of the power ranks this week? Who are you most surprised about?